It's shocking that they allow Eggman after his continued crimes to still be a member of NATO. Hello, good morning. Good morning, BBs. It's too early. It sure is. Welcome to the first best and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. And you gotta chew your food 20 times. I'm learning. You gotta chew it 20 to every bite 20 times. That has absolutely nothing to do with the news today. It's but got everything we do to have do with your health and safety. Plenty of things that we are going to tell you about today. And one of them isn't the health and safety of chewing 20 times. Yes, uh, it is. We're gonna be talking about. I just did it. We're going to be talking about uh, the games that people are playing that are old. Uh, there's actually a lot of news about old games, oddly. Yeah. A lot of that. There's a lot of old uh, games today. We are going to be talking about Discord somehow accidentally view botting YouTube. All the way to the top, baby. All the way to the top. <laughs> Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, billionaires, unfortunately. Boo. And we're going to be talking about a couple of different types of really awful rich people, which is our least favorite thing, but you know your favorite thing to listen to us talk about. Yeah. We know that it's true. Also, we're going to talk about some some good video games that are coming out. Yeah. And uh, also, just my, my lord, we have so much stuff. There is a lot of stuff, and... We get to to do all of that because there's a special episode today sponsored by Hit Point Press. We're going to tell you all about it later, but today's episode is brought to you to celebrate the launch of the Kickstarter for the Field Guide to Floral Dragons from Hit Point Press. Uh, you can see there is a link in the chat. The command is in the title right now, exclamation point floral, if you want to check it out for yourself. Uh, but we'll get into all of that, go through some of the cool perks of it later, and tell you about this lovely book yeah. in a bit. In a bit. In a bit. In a bit. Just get, everybody calm down. We'll do it in a bit. You know you're excited, but give us a minute. Chew Goodness. your food 20 times. You have to break it down mm -hmm. so you can properly digest it and absorb the nutrients. Yeah. Well, hey, since you're talking about food, I'm going to show you really quick this uh, Sonic IHOP menu because on the Friday show, you were like, bring back fun menus. And then we were talking about well, Denny's. You were talking about the Hobbit menu specifically. Yeah, I was specifically talking about bring back the Hobbit menu. Now, you were actually issued a correction by BB's. It's the Denny's It menu. was a Denny's, it was a Denny's Hobbit Denny's, not menu, an not an IHOP one. But uh, IHOP heard a challenge and was like, but we could do a fun menu. Uh, and they're doing a Sonic-inspired menu. And it uh, literally just looks like the most normal food items. And it's so great. fucking funny to no, me. No, good. That's good. I honestly <laughs> think when they get too weird with the food items just yeah. to make it match a theme, it's bad. That's what was so good about the Lord of the Rings menu uh -huh. is it was just like, damn, this is just a lot of good food. Yeah. This is very good. I want everything off this menu. It being a Knuckles chicken sandwich is very funny. Yeah. Because it looks like it's just a normal thing, and then you go, ha, ah, knuckle sandwich. It's a knuckle sandwich. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. at first you're just like, why is it a chicken sandwich? And then yeah. you're like, wait a minute. Now, I do <laughs> think that the absence of any chili on this menu Surprising. is very odd. Yeah. Uh, but everything looks good. The the tails uh, item is called the two by two by two. Which I'm pretty sure they have all the time. They have it all the time, but this one is for tails. Sure. Uh, then we have uh, Sonic's Blue Blur Special, which is just a nice blueberry, blueberry pancakes. pancakes. That's it. Knuckles has a chicken sandwich. Eggman's got a Benedict. Uh, <laughs> the two that are actually like, well, actually, Amy's Sweet Strawberry Delight, I think, is something they normally have. Yeah. But Shadow's Chaos Chocolate Pancakes, I believe, are not a regular menu. They item. look like they're just chocolate pancakes. There's yeah. no way that IHOP, the International House of Pancakes, does not have chocolate, pa chocolate, chocolate chip pancakes. There's mostly, no way. That Well, they're mostly, it's not, no, Sage, this is for some. They're this the is, International no. House of Pancakes, Anthony. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Is that from Ch Chocolavia? The, the country of chocolate? It's not really like a, it's not really a regional thing. That yes, they it is. Do. It's the International House. They really don't focus on the International they at all. They only serve NATO approved pancakes at the International correct. House of Pancakes. I don't think that's correct. That is correct. It's they only serve uh, pancakes from UN recognized countries. <laughs> yeah? yeah, that's right. Which is why it's shocking that Eggman is still a member. <laughs> it's shocking that they allow Eggman after his continued crimes to still be a member of NATO. 
There, I said it. I'm sorry to get political, especially yeah. on a sponsored episode, but Eggman <laughs> simply shouldn't be allowed to attend UN meetings. I have to imagine that he must have broken some NATO laws you in the many crimes he's been committing. Eggman should not be allowed to attend the Security Council. He should not be privy to that information. What if they talk about the Chaos Emeralds? <laughs> well, that's... That's why he's there. He's really hoping. I and know. For, and is very disappointed it hasn't come up yet. And it's, it's been all of this boring world politics, and he's just been like, one of these fucking meetings. Like one of these days. These, these chaos emeralds. I'm going to get that chaos emerald. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's just Jim Carrey really in character? Yeah. Man on the moon style? Yeah, I think he's man on the mooning it. Yeah, I think he's man on the mooning <laughs> the Eggman at a UN That's right. meeting. <laughs> That's right. He he wants he he demands that uh, the UN recognize the death egg. Hey, I'm just gonna say it as well. Sorry to get you know a little political and controversial. Don't I don't think that Jim Carrey should be allowed in UN meetings either. No. <laughs> What is he just walking into UN Security <laughs> I don't Council think, meetings? Like separately, not as the, you know, famous criminal, the Eggman. I also think Jim Carrey, just as Jim Carrey, should probably not be allowed it's to sit wild in that the UN. Jim Carrey can just put on a fake mustache and walk into the UN Security Council. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the menu is available now. <laughs> and it looks delicious. It looks boring. How dare. Uh, Alex, what do you think? Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Alex. Good morning. Hello, hello. Do you think it should be special items? I think it, they should be cooler items, but I'm more interested in the late stage capitalism of a pan coin. Have you seen that? No. Okay. There's this thing that IHOP has. They've got a special rewards program called like the stack holder yeah. program. And it's a cryptocurrency. They have a, a it's it says on their website, what's a pan coin? A pan coin is a crypto pancake. No. You can trade three pan coins for a short stack of three pancakes. I was lying. I was kidding. It's it's a cryptocurrency. It's not based crypto. Around. It's a crypto pancake. No. It's a it, that's it is a no. That's a frequent buyer card that they are masquerading as a crypto cur Okay, it's a crypto. Okay. It's a it's pan crypto. coin. It's they're all right. Oh my god, it's a pan Oh my god, it's a pan coin. Oh my God, there's IHOP crypto on the official IHOP website. How much, hey, Alex, go to Coinbase and find out how much PanCoin <laughs> is trading for compared to Ethereum right now. I want to know if I need to move my money over to PanCoin. So he said, hasn't this been a thing for a while now? How on earth would we know that? How would we know? <laughs> how would we know? Are you, are you, were you keeping an eye on PanCoin? Are you a crypto pancake enthusiast? Pancoin is just. Listed. It actually says you should transfer all your money to Pancoin. It, well, you should. Yeah. yeah. Look, it just every time you spend five dollars, they give you a credit towards a pancake. That's all it is. It, they're, they're using crypto terms. I think it's actually kind of funny. I think it's funny that they're doing it. But does this mean that Sonic the Hedgehog is into crypto confirmed? Do you think that Sonic got crypto in exchange for this deal, at least partial crypto. He seems like he'd be kind of into crypto. I'm sorry. Sonic? Yeah. He'd get caught up in it for yeah. sure. He wouldn't think much about it. No, I don't think he would be well-researched on it. Everybody says that they're putting their money into this crypto. Yeah. I'm going to give it a try. Yeah. It's so, okay. I'm just going to play. I'm. Just, it's just a little play money, Tails. Here's and what I will say. And then he puts say. way too much in. Yeah. He's like, oh, no, Tails. I saw the number going up. <laughs> I saw the number going up and I just kept putting more and more in. Tails, it was a rug pull. Well, famously, Sonic has been adopted by the internet as a rampant anti-capitalist. Yeah, it's true. But he might have taken it in like the weird libertarian way, which, unfortunately. Which he might have done. Listen, in the beginning, there were a lot of people who loved the idea of a decentralized currency. Uh-huh. Not connected to one country. Sure. Forget about exchange rates. We all, we should all have this global currency. Yeah, except, and, I could and see, then it was a scam. Yeah, I could see Sonic getting caught up. Actually, I could see Knuckles getting caught up in that more than Sonic. You think Knuckles got Sonic in? Partic yes. Yeah. Yes, particularly Sonic Boom Knuckles would get really into crypto. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Anyways. Anyways. Pancakes. <laughs> Pancoin. Pancakes, Pancoin. That the was bank not, of pancakes. It was, listen, the takeaway is not Pancoin. The takeaway is Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, so don't, don't worry about it. That's don't worry wild. about it. That's wild. Uh, hey. Yo. Is it okay if I... Um, 
if I just do a hard swerve into just a little bit of movie and TV news. Sure. I'm just going to do a hard swerve for two things that are very interesting. Okay. Um, the first of all, the first one is Daredevil Born Again is shooting right now. Yeah. Uh, minor, this is the minorest of spoilers for Daredevil Born Again. Uh, so if you don't want to hear that, uh, mods, let people know when Thank we're you. done. Yeah, we'll do another hand gesture. You can just mute it. Uh, so here's the thing. Mm-hmm. We know it's shooting. Yeah. Uh, we know that it's uh, it was delayed because of COVID. Mm-hmm. But now all of the fun little details are starting to uh, starting to leak out, either officially through Marvel uh, or don't unofficially. Don't show it, actually. Sorry. Yeah, just for the sake of spoilers, just uh, in case people are watching muted. But one of the things that they released are were some on-set photos mm-hmm. of John Barenthal. Yeah. Returning as the Punisher. Yeah. Uh, I love John Barenthal. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of the Punisher as a character. No. Uh, I thought the Punisher show did the best it could with the character of the Punisher. I think it had some interesting ideas. Yeah. It was one of those shows that I watched and I was like, this is a good show, but it's not necessarily a show for me. Yeah. I'm, that's not, listen, I'm not, I'm not into it, but you did the best job you could with it. But something that they've been doing uh, a little bit mm-hmm. that people have been noticing is the defenders have been posting things to their social media. Finn Jones was published that he was uh, going on a little trip soon. And one of the things that was in his bag was a copy of the last issue of Power Man and Iron Fist. How interesting. Now, we've spoken before about the possibility of this returning as they're, as they're reviving these properties. Mm-hmm. And obviously about the like, well, you'd have to recast Iron Fist, right? Right. And even the guy who played Iron Fist was like, you, they should recast you Iron could, Fist. You could it recast shouldn't be me. Iron Fist. It shouldn't be me. Yeah. But what's going on? But what's going on? Um, what are you guys doing? There was also a photo earlier this year mm-hmm. from Kristen Ritter. Kristen Ritter posted a picture of herself wearing the Jessica Jones shirt saying, if you know, you know. And some people were like, well, is she just, you know, giving a shout out to Jessica Jones or. And it could be just a like, oh, remember this series? Uh, I loved it. And there's all these things coming back. Like, oh yeah, Jessica Jones. It could be. Could be. But it probably isn't. Except if Finn Jones is posting. Right. There's too many things to be a coincidence. Now there's one, there's one uh, person who is not posting Sage. Mike Coulter. Mike Coulter, Mike Coulter, Luke Cage has not Thank posted you. anything. I was just staring at yeah. your face uh, to, for recognition to be like, I need you to know that I don't know these actors' okay. names. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, the Iron Fist has posted, uh-huh. but Luke Cage has not posted. What does that mean? Is he particularly active on social media? He is. He has an Instagram. Hmm. Curious. They could Curious. be, they could be, listen, if this is Marvel orchestrated, and it is, everything Finn, is. <laughs> Finn Jones does not have a perfectly perfectly sealed mint copy of uh, Power Man and Iron Fist yeah, just yeah, yeah. sitting in his duffel bag. Right. Uh, they could be holding off on the Mike mm-hmm. Coulter of it all. Yeah. You know? Uh, and but if why Finn would Jones, it be Finn Jones? Well, I'll tell you why it could be Finn Jones. Uh-huh. The reason why it could be Finn Jones is because Finn Jones is the most controversial of them all. Now, remember when they brought back, uh, who's he, what's it, uh, to be Quicksilver in uh-huh. WandaVision. Yes. You know who's he, what's it. The of one course. from uh, American Horror Story. We all love him. Yes. Uh, they brought him back. And then it was like, <laughs> but he wasn't really Quicksilver. Yeah. So that's my thought. Is it like, A, if they're going to reintroduce the Defenders and if they are going to recast Iron Fist, it's not a bad idea to do a handoff of a like, hi, we respect that you did this and we acknowledge that this Iron Fist existed, especially if everyone else mm-hmm. is being played by their previous actors, yeah. Uh, then it would be smart to do some kind of handoff to show that like, hey, he's cool with it. Like he has said in interviews, yeah. it shouldn't be me. They well, should get someone else. And one of the things that uh, they talked about quite a bit before the show was canceled mm-hmm. was how eventually the Iron Fist would probably end up being Colleen Wing. Yeah. So maybe it's that Hawkeye style handoff. That's right. Maybe they're both coming back and Colleen Wing is the Iron Fist now. That'd be cool. There could be any number of things, uh, but the return of the defenders mm-hmm. 
is a very is a very cool thing for me. Yeah, uh, I think it's a very cool thing for a lot of people because yeah. for a while, uh, it, those Netflix series were some of the best things Marvel had going. I couldn't get through the Defender series. No, the Defender series was bad. It was absolutely unwatchable. I, I I watched one episode and I was like, <sighs> they put a lot of faith into the show running team from Iron Fist. Bold move. And, Not sure why. And that show running team was also the show running team of the Defenders. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really, you could tell. I didn't watch Iron Fist. I watched about half of Iron Fist before I just had to. Yeah. I got one episode of each of those in and was like, I'm okay. That's enough for me. The funny oh, I'm thing, full. Thank you. The funny thing <laughs> about the Iron Fist show was the best elements of the Iron Fist show were just the best elements of the first season or two of Arrow because it was it's a similar story. Yeah. You know, so like he comes back to civilization all trained up and he's like, oh, fish out of water. I've heard of this. Which yeah. was, yeah, it was it was the Arrow show. It mm -hmm. was Captain America. And it was kind of like, uh. yeah. and then it was and then it also just felt like a 90s syndicated show. Whew. There was there was a part in the first episode of Iron Fist where he's mm -hmm. sitting and meditating like in a jail cell mm -hmm. and it goes to like a CG like he's on a mountain and there's an eagle and I was just like, "Whoa, this is bad." Yeah. It looked like a it looked like an opening for a Soul Calibur game on the PS2. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It looked like one of those. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I think the return of Jessica Jones yeah. and Luke Cage in particular mm -hmm. would be huge. I think that we're in a, such an interesting place for Marvel right now because people were feeling like things were getting a little too, it was like they got too spread out and then it was like, we're trying to jam everybody back together, but like everyone's too far away. Mm -hmm. And they were getting further and further out from recognizable characters. They yes. were like, you've seen all of the recognizable characters. We are out of characters that like, you know, your mom knows, yeah. right? So they have the opportunity if they're looking at it and being like, shit, okay, well, we can't just keep giving you more Captain America. Uh, they can be like, well, there are these characters that you do know the names of that are familiar that we can bring back in and get new content yeah. out of uh, without having to expand this universe again um, because they're already, they yeah. know the directions they're expanding in. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, um, so I can see the value in bringing back something like the Defenders that is familiar yeah. like that. If you're going to have face, Marvel's already said they were not, they were not happy with how phase four went. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're redrawing some of the stuff for phase five. They're figuring yeah. things out. If you are moving towards the Young Avengers, the mm -hmm. champions, whatever you're going to call them, um, you need a bunch of mentors for those characters that yeah. people care about. Uh, and you've lost basically all of your original lineup of Avengers, except for Ruffalo, who will like come back and, and play the Hulk just for funsies. Yeah. Uh, everybody else is kind of like, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to have recognizable characters that people care about to train these kids to like run alongside these kids. Yeah. Um, and especially with Miss Marvel being the one that's mm -hmm. popped off so hard. Yeah. Bringing back some New York tri-state area characters. Mm -hmm. That'd be kind of nice. One I'd of my, love it. One of my favorite, one of my favorite bits, uh, mm -hmm. which I believe was a Jody was actually written by a friend of the show, Jody Hauser, oh. was um, Kamala Khan mm -hmm. teaming up with Daredevil and Moon Knight. Yeah, and like being completely fish out of water with these like angry night dudes. Love you know, it. <laughs> I look anything you tell me, you're gonna put Kamala Khan in. I'm going to be in. Yeah. I'm going to be in. I think like I, you could describe any dynamic of like her with the most fun and cheerful Avengers. Absolutely. Here with the most angry and brooding of boys in the universe. I'm like, yeah, she'd be so great. in yeah, that. Oh so my God. Fun. Yeah. Oh my God. She'd be so fun and everything. And of course, uh, the big thing that everybody's been wondering about mm -hmm. is uh, X-Men. Yeah. And in the comics, Kamala Khan is no longer an inhuman. She's mm -hmm. a mutant. Yeah. And she is she is a very high ranking member of the X Men. So uh, usually, when Marvel does like when Marvel Comics does a big swerve like that, yeah, or reintroduces a character or some, it's mm -hmm. because something's coming up big for that character that is similar. Yeah. Um, uh, how much of this stuff happens in Daredevil: Born Again? We don't know. It can't be all of this. It can't but, be all of it. Uh, Wolf Harkheimer said, uh, "Same. All I want is more Kamala Khan. She's carrying the entire MCU on her back right now." And I stand by that. Stop, stop making the child carry the whole universe it's on her so back. It's so heavy. It's but so like, heavy. She is carrying the whole thing on her back right now. We've got, we've got her, 
making the entire MCU happen right now. And then we've got poor Tom Holland getting drunk and trying to keep two studios on friendly terms. <laughs> yeah. These youths should not be in charge of this stuff. Yeah. Sony and Marvel are Tom Holland's divorced parents that yeah. he's really trying to get to both come to dinner. He's just like, hey, guys, come on. Come on. Like, hey, for my birthday, can't we just have a nice dinner? I just, we're, look, I've got a we recital a nice, coming up. I would like it if you both were there. Can't we just have a nice movie for me? Yeah, come on. Come on. Can't we just make a nice billion or so dollars? Uh, there's been a lot of other, uh, I would call them gelatinous Marvel rumors going yeah. on right now because yeah. uh, nothing is, everything is sort of in the air. Nobody mm -hmm. knows what's going on right now. Uh, but there have been a few about like a Spider-Man four with Tobey Maguire, which uh, Sam Raimi says, no, that's nobody's spoken to me about it. Uh, but Sam Raimi did take We don't want it. Here's you know what? It's me. I don't want it. You know what, though? The. The um, youth pastor in recovery sort of vibe of Tobey Maguire's Peter yeah. Parker in, yeah. in uh, loved him. No Way Home. Loved him in No Way Home. Yeah. I don't want a whole movie. I don't need it. a whole movie. That was the perfect amount of him. Though, uh, yeah. I'm good. Kirsten I'm, Dunst. I'm, again, I'm so full. I couldn't possibly yeah. have another. Kirsten Dunst said she would come back. Sure. Nobody asked her. <laughs> she said, no, nobody asked her to come back. No, she, she's, <laughs> nobody asked her. She just opened up. She was like, hey, you. Hey, you, tell Marvel I'd come back. <laughs> tell Marvel if they wanted to put me in a Spider-Man, I'd do it. Tell them I'd do it. Uh, she said, no, I haven't seen No Way Home. I can tell you that I wasn't called to be a part of it, but I would have done it. She didn't even watch it? No. Don't, don't. She said before, she's like, yeah, I love doing superhero movies. I support my family and my sick mother. And I love that for her, but like... You could watch one. You could watch one. You she, could watch one. She might have watched one. Before you say I'd come back, you could watch one. Yeah. And then you can say you'd come back. Hey, listen, she did the first one without knowing anything about how it was going to turn out. She'd she could come back. Yeah, but that was reasonable because there wasn't anything to go off of. Sure. Like, I understand if you didn't read all the comics. Okay. But I guess from her perspective, you were going to do a Spider-Man 4 with, with their characters she wouldn't watch any of the other stuff. She'd be like, I you know who Mary Jane is. You'd watch the one that Tobey Maguire was in. She's like, no, I know who Mary Jane is. No. Uh, but I would- Sick of it. <laughs> she will be the MCU's Madam Web. Oh my God, her and, her and Dakota Johnson as two different <laughs> Madam Webs. Yeah, just what we need. Another Madam Web. Madam's Web. Ma um, not Madam Webs. No, Madam's Web. web. <laughs> the S is actually at the front of the word Web. It's Madam Web. It's Madam Web. Um... <laughs> But the thing, the other thing that Sam Raimi did say is uh -huh. like, hey, I'll direct Secret Wars. A lot of just like unprompted. He was sure like, you will. He was okay, because like, everyone loved what you did last time. He was like, I I'd do it if they asked. And no, and again, nobody asked. He just opened up a window yeah. and said, you boy on the street, what year is it? And then he said, tell them I'd direct Secret Wars if Marvel's interested. Uh, don't remind them about the last one. Don't listen. I'm not going to say anything because I love Sam Raimi and uh, I love I love most things Marvel. But boy, it really did seem like Multiverse of Madness was about 40 percent directed by the second unit. It seemed like Sam Raimi was yeah. there for about half of it. And there was half of it where he was like, when they go to this other planet where it's uh -huh. clean and people are eating food and it's got nothing to do with anything. Yeah. Do I need to be there for that? Or can <laughs> someone else do that scene? Here's my hot take. And a lot of people don't like this. If Multiverse of Madness was a non-canon story that didn't affect the timeline, I would actually really like that movie. You are, um, you are much like me, mm -hmm. uh, a little, we're a little like, what? What about Wanda? Yeah, so little, I don't like Wanda what now? they. I don't like what they did to Wanda. Yeah. I don't like how that. It doesn't make any sense from where we were or where we're going, no. right? But if you plucked it out and you didn't have it following the events that we know it followed, mm -hmm. and you didn't have it having to be followed, and you didn't have the like justice for Wanda that we all sure. feel, and I agree with you. I think they did her absolutely dirty. Is like right as like a what if episode. Sure. Or even or even if it wasn't our Wanda. Yeah. It was a multiverse. A multiverse Wanda. Because because she makes a really fucking cool villain and she did a very good job. And that's yeah. why I like it. Because I think she did a phenomenal job in that film. And I don't think because people were shitting on it so much, I don't think people give her enough credit no. for like how much she did with what she was given, she like outside of her to. character. Like she was so good in it and she was such a scary villain. And a lot of the like Horror action. Yeah. 
which you know Sam Raimi Dude, that, that was scene, really good. That scene where they were in the temple mm -hmm. and she is like moving in shadows. And through mirrors and stuff. Yeah. She was playing it full Sam Terrifying Raimi horror and villain. Awesome. And I think that has to do with like, mm -hmm. whenever you see Elizabeth Olsen in interviews or press, you get the feeling that she is very like, she has the healthiest type of I was a child actor, which is I show up on set, I'm game for anything. Yeah. My job is literally, you tell me what the character is and I figure out in my brain how to make it work and I'm mm -hmm. good with that. We're yeah. all having fun here. And uh, she wasn't and like she a- she had to like- Yeah. She had to take everything she knew about that character and mm -hmm. everything they grew about that character in WandaVision because they really did yeah. grow that character. Yeah. And go, okay, how do I take that character, yeah. which I still have to play as the same person mm -hmm. and make all this stuff that I'm doing make sense? And she did it. She She's did great. it. I think she was great. I think it was really good. Uh, uh, I think that the uh, choices were bad for yes. the MCU. I think that it didn't make any sense, but I think she did a great job. I think there were cool- It's a fun movie. Yeah, I think there were a lot of cool sequences in it. Yeah. Um, I think there were a lot of weird sequences in it. Yeah. I think it was a full-on Sam Raimi movie. Yeah. Uh, except for those 40% that he didn't show up for. But I don't want him to do another one. No, and I- I don't want, I actually don't want him to do any more Marvel. Well, because, okay, here's the thing. I've had enough. I'm full. He's- he has said before mm -hmm. he got a, somebody gave him like a synopsis of what happened during WandaVision. Like he got the, he got like a, a Cliff's Notes version of yeah. WandaVision. Which you know and, is my least favorite thing. Like this yeah. activates me. And I think if you're going to do something in the Marvel universe, mm -hmm. in the MCU. Yeah. It's very rare that they give a director a lot of freedom. And I feel like they gave Sam Raimi uh, quite a bit of freedom. Yeah. For whatever reason, maybe they didn't like what what happened. Maybe they didn't like the way the first Doctor Strange turned out. I don't know. Maybe he had to jump in. You know, Strange is great. Uh, maybe he had to jump in as a replacement because you know the director dropped out. He was like, nah. Scott Derrickson was like, nah. Creative differences. I don't want to do this. We don't know. Uh, I mean, Scott Derrickson has said there were creative yes, differences. Yes, but we don't know what the yeah we don't know like. what the timeline was mm -hmm. or anything on that. And maybe mm -hmm. Sam Raimi came in and made like a quick Sam Raimi movie yeah. when no one was looking. But right. The deal with the Marvel stuff is mm -hmm. if you're going to come in, you got to know, like you're saying, you got to know if you're going to direct one of these and write mm -hmm. one of these, you have to know where it fits in with everything. Yes. And the studio has to tell you if what you're doing does fit in with everything correctly or not. Correct. And so there was, there was a fundamental mismanagement of Wanda there yes. that was just a breakdown in the in the entire chain of command somehow of Marvel Studios. A Kotoroku said, uh, imagine if that movie came out before WandaVision like it was supposed to, and Wanda was losing it over Vision's death, and then we got the show. Yeah. That would make so much more sense. That would have been amazing. A, uh, Marvel has a real thing for women are sad about babies for some reason. Oh, and it women makes get them, so sad about women babies. Women are always so sad about babies. Oh. That's like a real thing for Marvel. But again, it's like this thing of, just watch, just watch, just fucking watch the show. There's only eight episodes of yeah. WandaVision. Like, I understand if you're like, I haven't seen every single movie in the MCU. Yeah, but I've okay? watched everything that relates to the characters that appear in this film. Like, hey, it's a day. Yeah. It's a day to watch WandaVision. It is so infuriating good. to me. It's a great show. Sam it's Raimi would have loved WandaVision. A phenomenal show. It is still my favorite of the Marvel shows. Yeah. I find it at genuinely infuriating when we hear things like this. And it's like one of those things that like big time pisses me off. Even in her, like even in talking about her being like, I'll play Mary Jane, but I didn't want, I'm like, all of that pisses me off. I'm like, just watch a fucking movie. Yeah. And here's the thing too. If you didn't shut your mouth. Uh, yeah. Like if you didn't just shut your mouth, stop telling us like it's a flex. Yeah. I, I just, you know, is it a flex? You'll get paid they, to watch it, I promise. Yeah, is it a flex? Are they being honest? I don't know. But Taika like, Waititi tries to use it as a flex. Taika Waititi does use it as a flex. But the thing about Taika Waititi is he was brought in to fundamentally mm -hmm. change everything about Thor. Mm -hmm. And it was not a movie that needed to link into a lot of, of continuity well, other than like... It wasn't Taika Waititi. Taika Waititi said it about Star Wars. Right, but yeah. he but he did say it about Thor as well. He Jesus. brought he he came in and he was like, Guys, I didn't, I'm over him. He's like, I didn't really. He yeah. saw. I think he said he saw the first one and he was like, I didn't really like it. Mm -hmm. He's like, I didn't really wa like it. I didn't watch yeah. a lot of these things, but I think they brought me in because they knew I didn't like it and yeah. they knew they wanted to retool it and change it. And I think in the I think in that case, when you are brought in to reimagine something that isn't working. 
it's okay. Watch what isn't working still. Well, still watch what isn't working. No, how do you know what didn't work if you didn't watch it? It's okay. There's no excuse. If you're not creative enough to come up with your own idea once you've watched other stuff, then you're not that good. I think it will. If you're not creative enough because you're like, well, now that I've seen it, I can't come up with my own idea because I've been influenced, then you're just not that good. And that's okay, but then someone else should do it because someone else is that good. I don't know. Someone I, else is that good. Uh, well, but, uh, but counterpoint, Ragnarok fucks. And Love and Thunder doesn't. Love and so, Thunder. So, yeah, a sure. A 50 50 track record kind of ain't shit. I'm sorry. I was so in love with Taika Waititi, and I am so over it. I am so over it. He is way overhyped. And I think that, like, one out of two is not yeah. a great track I'm not record. Disag- I'm not disagreeing. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying there are times when somebody can come in. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are actors. I've spoken to a lot of actors and, and people who have worked on Star Wars that are like, no, I'm not a, I'm not the hugest Star Wars fan. You don't fan. have to be. I, I haven't seen a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. But they still come in and they do well, mm-hmm. even though they don't know everything about it because they trust the people around them to go like, hey, we don't really do that. What you want to do is this. Or like there's somebody who's in charge at the studio who goes, yo, you have to make sure this, this, and this happen about yeah. this character. I don't expect you to memorize the canon. I do expect mm-hmm. you to watch the movies because it's not hard. Take this in contrast yeah. with uh, women in film. Uh, take this in contrast with Greta Gerwig being yeah. like, we're hosting a movie church. And every week that we are filming this movie, we're all, the cast, the crew, everyone, not just the person who's directing the gosh darn movie. We're all sitting down and we're watching a movie that inspired Barbie. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of- We're all educating ourselves and look at what happens from it. Like a really, really synchronized, massive, I mean, that is a huge group of people on that production too, right? There's so many characters that all understood the assignment. And there are a lot of directors that work that way. I mean, Ryan Johnson works that way. He gives everybody like a list of like, here are the movies that we're pulling from. Gareth Edwards works that way. You're all making so much money. Um, You're all making so much money. You could watch a couple movies. Yeah. There's no excuse. There's there's no scenario. And that's why I'm saying it's like a- it is a fundamental like breakdown somewhere mm-hmm. because somebody is giving the the feedback and the support of we just love you we love what you do we love these characters let's see what you do with these characters and that's something that can work in like it can work in film and it works a lot in comics mm-hmm. i mean that's kind of where this comes from is like that run of spider-man is over mm-hmm. we want you to come in and do a new run of spider-man because we just like Chip Zarsky, you come in and you do whatever you want with Spider-Man. And you think, you think Chip Zarsky had never read a Spider-Man? No. Oh, there no. we go. But has he kept up with everything? I don't know. But there is stuff like that that works in different media. It doesn't always work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when something is a linchpin of your continuity. Yeah. Uh, which I think, you know, Ragnarok was not. Mm-hmm. But... WandaVision into Multiverse of Madness yeah. was a big deal for the Marvel Universe yeah. in setting things up. Mm-hmm. And somebody at Marvel Studios should have been at the wheel there to say to Sam Raimi, yes. hey, we're looking at these dailies yeah. or we're looking at this script. Mm-hmm. We have to tell you that this you've got to do something yeah. different with this character because we're not really... Yeah, it can be multiple people's failings, but it doesn't alleviate him of his own failings, you know? Um, That's my opinion on it. It's like, yeah, sure, someone at Marvel should have been like, hi, this doesn't align with our canon 100%, absolutely. Uh, There's no one person that can make any decision. It's Mm -mm. a massive corporation that's going to go through a million hands before it gets anywhere. So a million people, if you feel like you were failed by it, a million people failed you on it then. But... And I think director, I, I director think, could watch yeah. could watch eight episodes. I think more than anything, uh, a lot of this stuff is is a symptom mm-hmm. of Marvel being spread far too thin over the last few years. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that they're looking to fix. Um, it's something that they're looking to fix in phase five for sure. Yeah. Cause it did, it had the feeling of being spread too thin. Yeah. It had the feeling of, we've talked about this. It had the feeling of we're not putting out this movie or this show because it makes sense for the universe. We're doing it because it says on the calendar that we have to release a show. Right. Yeah. And you never want to get to that point really yeah. uh, because that kills the creativity of something. Uh, Demon just said they need a lore master just to ensure consistency. They, they have. have, they absolutely have. They a hundred percent. They have. have the council. Yeah. They have the council and it's, it's a bunch of people that, that look over everything. But I think there was so much going on and so many things being rewritten and changed for various reasons Yeah, uh, all along the way that it just kind of got away from them. It got too big and it got yeah. away from them. Um, anyway, anyway, that's Marvel. That's 40 minutes of talking about that's, Marvel. Uh, that's a lot of Marvel. Uh, <laughs> 
for like was, the tiniest story, which is so funny, but it's cool. It's uh, cool. There's good stuff hopefully coming. Yeah. The uh, the other thing in movies that I was going to bring up, which is... Uh, <laughs> just show it really quickly. We're just going to show it real quick. I hate how much I love this poster. Yeah. I hate you how much... You love it? I do. I don't. I hate how much I love this poster for for the Joker fo uh, folly I do. I think it's going to be so bad, and I'm 100% going to see it because I think it's so funny. I also expect that I will not like it, but I do love this poster. Yeah. I do love it. I'm sorry. I think I think it's so good. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really funny. Here's the thing. If I hadn't seen the first movie, I think I would be with you that like, this is a good poster. This is an interesting looking yeah. movie. But then you take the context of the first movie and you apply it to that. And now it's a hilarious poster. Yeah. And now it's so funny. It's, and I'm in for it being so funny. I am too. And I mean, remember, it is a musical. So never forget that it's a musical. Never forget that it's a musical, which is to me the most interesting and exciting thing about it. It's so funny. Um, but I do, I do think it's interesting that like the movies that people really hold on high at DC are literally directors just fan filming other directors. Like the mm -hmm. like everybody talks up. The Batman. And I yeah. think the Batman was a fine movie. I think sure. it was a solid movie. Yeah. But like, hey, <laughs> hey man, hey Matt Reeves. Yeah. You've directed movies before. You don't have to make a complete David Fincher rip. You don't. You don't. But there it's funny be, that you are. It's funny that you are. It's hilarious choice. Todd, Todd Phillips, sure, the only movies that you directed before this, the biggest movies you directed before this were The Hangover. So we don't know too much about you stylistically, but you don't have to rip off Scorsese yeah. entirely. But you can. But you and did. And that's really funny. But you did. Yeah. Uh, you could do your own thing. I saw. I love the King of Comedy, and I think it's an underrated Scorsese movie. Do did I need it with the Joker? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. No. I don't know that I did. I. What is the release date on this? Uh, it is going to be October of this year. It's a Halloween. It's a Halloween movie. It's not a Halloween movie, but yeah, it's October fourth. Yeah. God, that's so funny. I just, I hope that it is bad enough to be funny because there is no ability in me to hope for a good movie from this. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like it is completely out of my hands. Uh, there's no world where I can be like, I hope it's good. No, obviously not. There's I don't even hope it's good anymore. I hope that it is a fun kind of bad that we can all have a good time with. Yeah. I think I think the only reason the the first one got so much notice, and well, I mean I know, and so and so much critical acclaim. We don't have to get into that. And and so much critical acclaim is is uh, people were just like, oh, it, it had been so long since we had a tonally different comic book movie. You think that's why? No, and I'm not. Listen, there are a bunch of other things going on, but. People like people got so used to the summer blockbuster superhero movie uh -huh. that they forgot that you don't have to do it that way. Sure. And so it was like, no, we're doing this and we're taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, you're not the first to do that. No, you're not the first to do it. Like also. It hadn't been that long since even Dark Knight. Like, guys, DC. Guys. Was, hey, let me tell you this. DC was never fun. <laughs> DC didn't start being fun in the middle. DC was always a sad time. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> listen, unless you're talking about like way, 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 way back in the day with your Batman I mean, Robins. in between yeah. the Dark Knight and the Joker. Oh, no. They, yeah, no, no, There was no. no fun in between. No, they didn't, right? do, no, they didn't do that. No, there was no gross. fun in between. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, well, you know. Mm. You yeah. know. No, and we, look, we couldn't possibly. We couldn't possibly have fun. Now, since then, obviously- Birds of Prey, very, very fun. Yep. We love Birds of Prey in this house. Um, the second Suicide Squad. Yep. Fun. That's Peacemaker. A fun movie. Yeah. Peacemaker's fun. They've done some fun stuff with TV. Yeah. But like the, DC movies weren't doing summer blockbusters no. like Marvel was. We weren't getting any Ragnaroks no. out of DC. James Wan tried with Aquaman, you know. That is not a fun movie. But it, but it That's wasn't a movie fun. about a weird alcoholic. It was it was masquerading as fun. <laughs> was it? Yeah. I didn't even know they were trying to have fun. They were trying to have fun. That's how unfun it was. I didn't even know they were trying. Yeah, they were trying. It's worse to me now if I know they were trying to have fun. Yeah, they were trying to have fun. Damn. Uh, it's it's interesting I, I because when I think about the DC universe, 
I don't know. It all has to do with the with the uh, Christopher Nolan, Zack Snyder of it all, really. Yeah. Because the comics aren't like that. I mean, no. Batman comics are, but that's Batman. But not every run of Batman comics even are. You no. know what I mean? Uh, as with all comics, it's entirely dependent on the run. But like, I was a DC Comics kid. Yeah. I grew up on DC Comics. I grew up loving DC characters. Uh, and then we got to movies and I was like, maybe... Maybe not for me. Maybe not for me. Maybe not for me. Shazam's anyway, fun. Yeah. Shazam's fun. I'll give you that. Uh, but yeah, there's the poster. Hilarious. There it is. Uh, Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn voice, by the way, is just Lady Gaga's voice, which I think is fine. She's not doing any voice? She's doing the Gaga voice. She already has kind of that accent. No, she doesn't. She she doesn't have it as big, but yeah, she's got kind of a little bit of that Did accent. Did they say she's not doing any? They, they released a, a clip of her saying something. And it was just like, you can do anything you want. You're Joker. And it was her doing just Gaga voice. I, I'm, Stephanie I'm still Germanata being Stephanie Germanata. I'm still hoping she'll come through. Yeah. With a little bit. I still think so. Um, um, all right. Let's that was talk the about, quick, quick, quick movie news. Yeah, yeah. So quick. So quick. So quick. Um, let's talk about, let's talk about the thing that's in the title. Sure. Shall we? Yeah. Um, Discord. Discord. You, you've heard of it. You use it. Um. <sighs> As with all big tech companies, they were like, we got to do April Fool's. We have to. They had to do April Fool's. Uh, we did a show on April 1st uh, yeah. talking about how much we hate April Fool's Day. Mm -hmm. um, and theirs was harmless, right? They put out a video that was like, we're doing Discord loot boxes. Yeah. Clearly a goof. Clearly a thing everyone would hate and not enjoy. I opened up the app, though. I got to tell you, I opened up the app and I forgot that it was April 1st for a second. Yeah. And they were like, Discord loot boxes. I was like, what the fuck? See, it is weird because it was one of those things where it's like, this isn't so ridiculous it's, that it couldn't happen. No, I mean, uh, between, Every time between, they're yelling at me about Nitro. Between Nitro and gifts. Yeah. And like, hey, you've got a Discord I'm gift not, waiting. I'm not, it's not that far off, right? Yeah. But the loot boxes were just like a silly, funny thing for April Fool's Day. However, what was slightly less of a silly, funny thing and was the prank that they didn't mean to, to pull mm -hmm. is they accidentally did a, a sick prank on YouTube and specifically GTA 6 when they accidentally view botted the video by making it play in the background at all times, essentially so, on Discord. Yeah. So what it was doing is you were supposed to log into Discord the first time. It pops up the video. Uh -huh. Ha ha. April Fool. You close the video. You never see the video again. Uh, if you had noticed that, like maybe maybe Discord was being a little a little weird. Yeah. Uh, maybe you were having some performance issues or uh, mine just kept like it kept doing the Windows thing where it was like turning orange. Yeah. And I was like, there's no new. My Discord was bugging out yeah, really, my... really bad. Uh, it turns out we were all watching that video over and over and over in the background. In the first 24 hours. And again, this is a YouTube video that was embedded. In the first 24 hours, it got 1.4 billion views, surpassing GTA 6's record of 24-hour views. Now, there are a couple things about this. Uh-huh. The first is that. For all of their talk about how you cannot view bot them anymore. Yeah. YouTube does seem particularly easy to view bot. And they would hate to hear that. Now, what is it? But what does it take? It takes everybody. It takes the entire Discord user base. Yeah. On all of these separate IPs mm -hmm. watching this video. Right. Being forced to. But yeah. watching it over and over like that should not be upping the view count the way it is no youtube is supposed to be sure that like a yes. single ip is not repeatedly watching a video that used to be the way that like we faked youtube views back in the day yeah i would go into the college computer lab uh -huh. when nobody was you there would activate an, uh, you would do a, a browser extension that's an automatic refresher and i would bring up one of my videos uh -huh. and i would do the auto refresher on like 20 computers yeah in the computer lab everybody was doing it in you know the early days of youtube and it's like oh man my video has over a thousand views right exactly <laughs> Whoa. so but let's talk about those numbers right because when you hear 1.4 billion you're like well what what are the other high viewed videos on youtube right so the gta 6 trailer which was currently holding the record for 24 hour views got 61 million views in 12 hours. And then after four Mazel months top. had 183 million views in total, which is a lot. But I'd like to remind you that Discord did 1.4 billion in 24 hours. Mr. Beast, the biggest creator on the platform, marketed as the high, the fastest growing YouTuber ever. Uh, he did half a billion on his Squid Game video. Yeah, did uh, 541 million views on his biggest video, the Squid Game uh, video. 
the one that everybody knows and watched. Yeah. 541 million. Uh, oh my God. 1.6 billion in 24 hours. That says, that says a lot about the YouTube. Uh, it says a lot about the Discord install base and how many people just are using Discord. Now. It does. Uh, but it also says a lot about like, how easily manipulated all data on the internet is. Yeah. Hey, you ever heard about dead internet theory? This is what it is. They didn't mean to do it, but they did it. Yeah. Dead internet theory is the theory that about half of the uh, half of the traffic on the internet is mm -hmm. bots. Yeah. It's all fake. It's all bots helping out bots. This is how easy it is to do so. And now you understand why dead internet theory is actually pretty realistic. The comments on this video are really funny. The top comment is that employee that had the idea of auto playing this video is definitely getting a surprise tomorrow. It's so funny because I'm sure the way this works is if you are, it works the same way any mm -hmm. infraction yeah. does. If I forget to feed the meter, mm -hmm. I get a $50 ticket. Yeah. If an entire fleet of commercial vehicles is illegally parked somewhere, yeah. the city calls that corporation yeah. and says, hey, would you move your vehicles? Would you stop that? We don't want to charge you any money. Would you stop that? So I'm sure what happened was somebody at the YouTube engineering team yeah. called up somebody at the Discord engineering team and says, y'all forget a semicolon somewhere? <laughs> y'all fuck something. Was there something that was supposed to be in brackets? Did you... And so far, there's been nothing, and the video still has the views. Uh, the next comment is, I can't believe 17.5% of the entire global population is this excited for loot boxes. Oh, we can't wait for the loot boxes in uh, Discord. Ooh. <laughs> After watching this video 3,700,000 times, I can confidently say it's a very good April Fool's joke. <laughs> So I'm saying accidentally breaking GTA 6's world record on April Fool's Day has to be the best joke ever in recorded history. Like accidentally a totally different joke. That's which so I love good. it. Someone's either getting a massive raise or getting horribly fired. I'm so curious to see. I'm so curious to see. Honestly, nobody gets in any real trouble over this. Yeah. I've been at, I've been at corporations where things like this happen. Nobody gets in any real trouble. Yeah. The team is like, ah, uh, somebody tells the team, hey, I got a call from YouTube. Yeah. I don't want to get a call from YouTube. Yeah. What did we screw up? Okay, we'll fix it. Okay, we can't do anything like that. We've mm -hmm. learned a lesson. Right. And maybe that team is not allowed to do as much for April Fool's yeah. next year. And that's it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> uh, Shelly Von Miller said, is number four one of the tensions uh, Salt and Serpent fan cams? Yeah, that's the, the fourth most viewed video on YouTube after uh, Discord, uh, GTA 6, and uh, Mr. Beast. Uh, Discord, who's notoriously great at social media, just tweeted, oops. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I think that's perfect. <laughs> that's really funny. I think that's the best. That's it. That's really funny to me. I think uh, that's great. Uh, we've got a lot of, like, old games news. Yeah, which is fascinating for but reasons. I think we should get to those mm -hmm. after we tell you about the sponsor of today's video. Wee -woo, wee -woo. Hey, friends, uh, we've already announced it. We are doing a one shot on Friday sponsored by Hit Point Press to celebrate the field guide to floral dragons. It is a genuinely, and I'm not kidding you, gorgeous 5e supplement book. Uh, I showed it on my stream when I came back with the physical copy of it yes. uh, before we were like partnering with them or had any kind of deal to do so because I was just like so enthralled by how beautiful these dragons were. Uh, genuinely had no idea we were going to end up working with them. So I'm super excited about it because uh, this is something I was really just looking forward to anyways. Uh, this is now up on Kickstarter. The Kickstarter just kicked off yesterday uh, and is already smashing through the goal because the, the additions that they have on there, the Kickstarter perks, are some of the best Kickstarter perks I think I've ever seen, and I'm not saying that. This is. I'm not told to say that. No, this They're is an really amazing freaking Kickstarter. Good. It's silly. Like uh, it's silly how good they are. Some of the physical stuff that you that you can get along with this book is really, really gorgeous. Uh, in addition to uh, the the book, you can get uh, you can get minis which look incredibly, incredibly good. Look at these. Look at these. Little, look at these. Literally floral dragon minis. I'm obsessed with it. The little B pin, all of the pendants are gorgeous, uh, liquid core D20s. But then I saw all of those because my eye was drawn to them first. And then I noticed a jigsaw puzzle and a coloring book too. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know when something was made for the cozy girlies? <laughs> the, the, <laughs> they knew what was up. The they knew that we'd love a jigsaw puzzle, a coloring book, and some pretty miniatures. Are Not you kidding that, me? One of the big one of the dragons is Visteria. Yeah. Uh, and there is a Wisteria scented candle for Visteria. Of course there is. Uh, it's 
It's good. I mean, I love mm -hmm. just a good art book. Yeah. Period. Like my, half of my bookshelf is just filled with good art books. Yeah. Uh, I love a good supplement book that just is there to jumpstart ideas and springboard ideas. Yeah. Uh, and this this book is both of them just really, really beautifully. It's really, really beautiful. Uh, I love, I love all of these dragons. Uh, we'll, of course, be running a one shot so you can actually see us playing with it and these beautiful dragon companions on Friday. Xander Genre is going to be running a game uh, that's going to be at 6 p.m. Pacific here on the channel. We'll be doing it live. It'll be up on YouTube. Uh, but right now, if you're watching this live or you're watching it day of, if you back before 10 a.m. tomorrow Eastern time, uh, there's still early bird perks it's the first 72 hours. There are early bird perks, which is, I believe it's the coloring book, right? Yep. Yeah. You get a signed book plate and coloring book uh, if you back within the first 72 hours. That is before 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. It is a 200 plus page book. Uh, it is absolutely gorgeous. There are 26 floral dragons, pests, pollinators, and fungi. And you know, we love the fungi. We love a fungi. Again, it's just, I keep looking at this and being like... For the cozy girlies, my goodness. It's so good. I feel act I feel targeted and serviced. I feel great. How cottage would you say you are? I'd say I, I consider myself are, in the cottage gore, which cottage is gore, the, the spooky yeah. cottage core girls. Mm -hmm. Uh and by the fungi, which is nature's most deadly cutie. Uh I feel very, very particularly yeah. targeted with the that. The deadliest, most connected cutie. Yeah. I love the dragon that is, like, I love this dragon that is basically a lion, but the mane is just a big, giant flower yeah. bloom. There's, it's good. Folks, it's good. They show you a bunch of them on there, so you get a pretty good idea of it. There's a lot of information on the Kickstarter page, so you can actually get a pretty clear idea of what you're getting. Uh, and all of these are, like, all of them are unbelievably beautiful. I, when they said floral dragon could picture two. Yeah. And that is the extent of my imagination. Uh, so somebody is much more clever and creative than I am. Uh, I'm super excited about it. They have a bunch of different bundles. Uh, so do check it out. If you're interested, you can do exclamation point floral in the chat to pull up our link to the Kickstarter. And uh, there's also a little spot there to uh, leave a message with your pledge. And if you'd like to let them know that we sent you, I mean, when you go ahead and back this to get your own copy of it, that helps us out because yeah. when people sponsor, it allows us to keep doing what we do uh, and do things like an extra stream today. Yeah. So uh, and we love it when we can support the channel. Yeah, we love it when, when we can be supported and we mm -hmm. can help support something that is so aligned yeah. with what we do here at Pixel Circus. So, yeah. Yeah. Hit Point Press is dope. Uh, they've done a lot of really, really wonderful things in the past too. So also there's always that thing with backing on Kickstarter where you're like, oh, okay, this is a company that has uh, successfully run and fulfilled a million yes. wonderful uh, Kickstarters. So you can feel very confident when you back as well. Yeah. We were actually talking about it. And normally a Kickstarter that uh, that is giving away this many not give you know is offering this many physical goods yeah uh, for different tiers. Normally we go whoa let's let's wait a second. Yeah. But this is a company that has a track record yeah. of running these successful Kickstarters, and so if they say you're going to get stuff, yeah, you're going to get stuff. I want those liquid core D20s. I don't have. Yeah. I've never had a liquid core. Really? They're so cool. They are. They're very They're really cool. Cool. They're genuinely really cool. That's I you. I'm, I'm a dice guy. You know, I'm a dice guy. Oh yeah. And I just, I love any kind of just fancy dice. I want to, I want the puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> it's are ridiculous. You, are you an adult coloring book person? So I'm not an adult coloring book person mm -hmm. usually, uh, because I'm not good. I'm not patient enough to color. You know what? Maybe now that I'm medicated, I could be. Yeah. I was going to say, I haven't that, tried since being medicated. Now that you're on the Adderall, you yeah, might yeah. find that you, that you enjoy a nice coloring book. It's entirely possible because I would get impatient. Yeah. And if I went out of the lines, I would be like, I give up. I'll tell you this. If you're attracted to a jigsaw puzzle now, give Love. a coloring book a try. Yeah, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe that's You it. know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm very excited about it. I hope you will tune in and join us on Friday. It's going to be a really fun game. We have an amazing cast of our fantastic friends coming in to play. Yeah. Uh, and you'll get to see things in action because it's got stat blocks for a bunch of cool freaking dragons. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't have enough dragons in their Dungeons and Dragons, okay? Get some, uh, get some fun ones. A lot of people in the live studio audiences have already uh, have already supported, that, which is great. Yeah. Uh, and then some people are are looking at it and they're noticing that a lot of uh, a lot of their favorite uh, people, creators, companies are involved with this. Yeah. Uh, Almec just mentioned like, whoa, there's a Yanir made D20. Yeah. yeah. 
slick Alex had it ready. That's beautiful. <laughs> uh, that's gorgeous. Isn't that really pretty? That's a gorgeous D20. <laughs> that, like kind of silly pretty. Like genuinely, I had received the book uh, when I, I met uh, some of the folks from Hit Point Press at a convention. Mm -hmm. uh, so when they were talking about the Kickstarter, I was like, oh, that's cool. It's a great book. That's awesome. It's going to be really cool. And then when it finally went live yesterday, I was like, about I did oh oh what? oh oh okay oh dang look at that sage dang. look at it that's really pretty that's really nice that's ridiculous yeah. anyways exclamation point floral yeah. uh in the chat uh go check it out and thank you to hit point press for sponsoring the show today yeah all right back to the news yeah Look at us go. We Look did it. Go. Okay, now I want to talk about a couple of things about old games. The yeah. first one is uh, uniquely interesting to me as a Roller Coaster Tycoon fan. Uh, Atari has officially bought the publishing rights for Roller Coaster Tycoon. They had previously had a licensing deal to license and publish uh, some of the Roller Coaster Tycoon games. And it's very interesting because a lot of the headlines are specifically saying Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. Yeah. But Atari has the publishing rights to all of the mainline Roller Coaster Tycoon games now. Um, but Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 is just obviously like the beloved <sighs> Roller Coaster Tycoon. Who is Atari these days even? A roller Coaster Tycoon, I guess. I get No, but I mean like what company is wearing the skin of Atari right now? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what company is the shambling corpse reanimated of Atari? I don't right know, now? but it's such an interesting collab to hear when you hear Atari has Roller Coaster Tycoon. You're like, what? What are you saying? It's Infogrames. Holy shit. Infogrames. Who's Infogrames? Infogrames was... Uh, it's is not it, Infogrames? No, it's Info, Infogrames, Grammas. I don't know. Okay. But they were a, they're a European game publisher that was, that's was that been around for a long time. All mostly right. known during like the 16-bit through like first 64-bit era. Yeah. Um, they apparently own... Uh, it's called Atari SA now, and which is an unfortunate... I don't think they knew they're European. They're probably not online. They play I, Pong a lot. I don't like it. Uh, but uh, they uh, they are they are the game now. Mm -hmm. They are the game now. They are the game. They are the Atari now. Atari is the game now. Atari is Infogrames. Infogrames is Atari. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I love Roller Coaster Tycoon. I'll always love Roller Coaster Tycoon. Uh, I tried to get into the other tycoons. I want to be a zoo tycoon girly really bad. Sure. I really do. But nothing hits like like Roller Coaster does. And I don't know why. I Roller Coaster Tycoon, I really enjoyed. Uh, theme, you know, theme Park, I really enjoyed. Roller Coaster Tycoon, though, was the better one because it had the beautiful first person when you build a coaster. Yeah. You could ride it. Yeah. Um, and you could delete a part of the track and send yourself and just go, flying off of it in yeah. first person. Yeah, uh, you are a bigger management sim person than I am, though. I love a management sim. Yeah, I love many management sims. I like it when they get weird. Like I, I my my favorite theme park simulator was the Jurassic Park theme park simulator for like yeah. the original Xbox, which fantastic. It was so good, fabulous. Uh, uh, I'm very into this. I just thought that this was interesting. I was just like, what a weird combination of words to hear. Yeah, you there, know, uh, there are other in, in the year 2024. Yeah, their other big announcement was they're bringing back the Sprint series. Sure. The last game in the Sprint series was apparently in 1989, so you're forgiven if you haven't heard of it. Uh, but Neo Sprint is apparently, it's just like one of these little top-down racing, racing games. games. All right. But it's got some vaporwave bloom effect to it. Yeah, we don't care. Because, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is apparently because they've released their Atari VCS. Uh-huh. You know, which is the, um, which is the, uh, the modern reimagining of the Atari yeah. that's also just like a full Linux computer. Yeah. And so they're trying to bring some like Atari games to the VCS, mm -hmm. it, but they're also coming to all consoles. Yeah. What is an Atari even this day? What is What do people want from an Atari? Do people want anything from an Atari? No. I don't think anybody wants anything from Atari. Is there any cachet to that brand anymore? It's a recognizable name. Sure. Do people recognize it as anything more than a, a t-shirt at a Hot Topic? Yeah, I think they recognize it as... Yeah, okay. For those listening on the podcast, I'm doing the uh, the, the Atari hand gesture. Just, you know the one. Yeah. You know the one. You know the one. It's if you do it in uh if you do it in the United Arab Emirates, you get thrown in jail. Yeah. Uh in other old game news. Yeah. 60% of all playtime last year 
was on games that were six years old or older. This is so wild to me. But also like, yeah, right? Like also, yeah. If you listen to what everybody's playing, you're like, that actually makes so much sense. Uh, And there were a couple of games particularly carrying that. There was GTA Mm five. There was Fortnite. There's Call of Duty and Roblox. Yeah. Which factors into that quite a lot. And I can't believe Roblox is more than six years old as a game made for people that are six years old. That tracks. This this is so fascinating. I mean, this is why companies, there are a couple things to take away from this data. Mm -hmm. The first of all is this is why companies are chasing that live service. Yeah. This is why they'll release so many live services that fail. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, why are they doing this? Every live service that fails costs them like $400 million. Yeah. It's because if you can be one of the ones that sticks. Yeah. Like Epic. It changes everything. Epic is who they are today. Mm Mm-hmm because of Fortnite. Yeah. Like Epic's always been around and they've always been big, but Fortnite absolutely really did it. Well, I mean, if you look at these charts, so this was on uh, across consoles and PC. They factored this all together, right? And they tried to average between them. So we actually have it also broken down by platform. So PC, the average years on the market of the top played games is 9.6 years. It makes more sense to me on the PC I not, thought maybe this was just PC yeah, when I saw just, the numbers in it. Not just because you get a new console like every six or seven years, yeah. but also because the PC library is so vast. Yes. And it doesn't depend on new releases as much as a console does. Yeah. Look, and the Steam library by itself, right? Everything backlogged on Steam. My most played game last year was probably Age of Empires 2. So sure. like I'm contributing, okay? Uh, PlayStation. years on average. Top game, Fortnite on both. Uh, Xbox, 7.2 years, Fortnite as well. Switch is uh, the the lowest on number of years. It's still number one with Fortnite, but it was followed by Tears of the Kingdom, bringing that average years on the market to 3.9 years. So so Switch is really kind of like pulling it back a little bit because it would be very high if Switch was not factored into this. But that's fascinating that Switch is the is currently the oldest console on the oldest current gen console. Yep. But has the newest player. And that talks about that attach rate that we're talking about with the Switch, right? It does. When people buy the Switch, Mm -hmm. they don't just buy the Switch and buy two or three games. Yeah. They buy everything for the Switch. Yeah. So it goes Fortnite, Tears of the Kingdom, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, which also makes sense. That's Mm -hmm. carrying a lot of it. Mario Kart 8, Minecraft, which is obviously going to bring that down a little bit. Pokemon, like... Animal Crossing, which yeah. those are coming up on that like four year mark of when the Switch launched, that yeah. four or five years now. Um, but yeah, so kind of kind of interesting to see. It it also puts into perspective the difference between mass market gaming, the mm-hmm. stuff that's being marketed to us, the stuff that's the hot new releases. Yeah, where if you are somebody who plays video games, you are getting uh, you are getting these new trailers, these new everything. Like you're on this marketing and hype cycle. Yeah versus what the enthusiast market, the actual right. people who sit down every day and play games yeah. want to play. And I think that enthusiast market does play their primary games. Mm-hmm. It, they, they come back to and they play, and the people that are putting probably the most hours of gaming are the people that are playing their legacy games yeah. in general. I mean, that's pretty clear. Uh, but I don't even think it's about, because this is about a uh, number of hours played, not most people playing these games, if right. that makes sense. And there's a difference in that because the enthusiasts are the people who are playing more hours carrying that average. Yeah. Uh, I also think it says a lot. I mean, and this is just me reading what I want to see into the data, Mm -hmm. but I think it also says a lot about the last few years of games and the current uh, top heavy budget, insane release cycle Yeah, and how the returns on that are not guaranteed and also diminishing. Uh, because I would rather play a well-made game that's been around for a few years than jump on the latest thing that's in the hype cycle. Yeah. And that's also the big danger with with so many companies making these huge multiplayer, we want to be a service games. Right. Because they're trying to get on that same list as Fortnite and Roblox. But if you don't get on that list, yeah. your game disappears within a month. Right. And what that leads to is it leads to the impression in people's minds that video games now are not as good. Mm-hmm. They don't last as long. They yeah. are not as worth the money as they right. used to be. Uh, and that's a problem that the entire industry has to face now after a, almost a decade of trying to shove a new live service down our throats every week. And it's that difference, too, of like 
the games that are on this list were all created before anybody was really particularly trying to get on this list, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. So when you see Fortnite, Roblox, Minecraft, The Sims 4, right? League of Legends, okay? All of these games weren't like, oh man, games as a service is where the money is at yeah. because it wasn't yet. No. All of those games that are carrying this list didn't go in with the intentions of that. I'm sure Fortnite knew that, you know, they'd be trying to update for a long time, but really they were just like, can we rip off this existing game and make something work? Right. And the answer was very much yes. Yeah. And the answer was a big yes at the time. But I think now it's that like, you can't capture it when you're trying, which is so hard. Yeah, it's, it's also once you see the trend, it's too late to jump on it. It is, exactly. You know, if you can see it, it's too late. Yeah, it's it's all of the people that uh, that want to tell you about the latest get rich quick scheme or book that they've read. Yeah. You know, you're uh, a lot of people who are into like your um like your Tim Ferrisses and people like that who are who are like, here's how here's how you can make money doing nothing at all. It's like, eh, if he wrote the book about it, that means the money from doing it is over. 100%. He squeezed all the juice out of that. Absolutely. Out of that orange, and there's no more left. Yeah. Uh, By the time the, the average person knows, it's already too late. Yeah. So I, I think it's interesting that people are still trying to jump on this. Yeah. And we, we do see some games that are making inroads into this. When you think about Dead by Daylight and some mm -hmm. of those that have like strong smaller but cult audiences. But what year did Dead by Daylight come out? That's true. That's That's been around that's for a long time, That's an old game too. now. Alex, can you check for us the release date of Dead by Daylight? Because yeah. I'm like, that's more than six years. What's the, latest, what's the latest game as a service that's been around for a few years? I can't really, I can't really think of one. I can't really name one. It's There's nothing always, on this list here. It's always whatever one is hot this year. Yeah. And then the old ones that everybody always plays. I'm like, maybe that Apex was, Legends? Uh, June 14th, 2016. 2016. 2016. So yeah. 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 That's just as old now. So I'm like, Apex is also like probably a 20, 2016 game yep. as well. That tracks. Uh, other games on here are like Rocket League that is probably 10 years old, you know? Yeah. Uh, Over so, 10 years, probably. Wow. Wild. Uh, so very interesting. I mean, one of the most modern games on here is FIFA 23, but like, can you consider that a new game when it's just the, 20, the 2023 edition yeah. of FIFA? Right? It's hard. Okay. Apex 2019. So that's probably one of the newest on this list. Yeah. Um, anyways, but, yeah, it's fascinating. I mean, it'll be, it's always interesting to see what the legs on something mm -hmm. like this will be right. Right. Right now it's hell divers. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if hell divers is around right. in two or three years in the way it is right now. Yeah. Uh, and not every game should have to be no, but they're really trying to push every game into, they're trying to fit every peg into that hole. Yeah. Uh, and that's really not what it's about. But there are cool new games. Yes. There are things, uh, including a game that Anthony and I are going to co-stream tonight. Yeah. I'm just telling them we're doing it. Yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it. Uh, content warning pulled in more than 200,000 concurrent players on its launch day. Uh, 6.2 million people now own the game. They released it as like an April Fool's thing, but it is not an April Fool of a game. It's a real game and it's great. Yeah. Uh, and it was free for April Fool's Day and I did not get in. So I have to go buy nope. it for $8 and yeah. that's quite all right. It's uh, only $8 now. Yeah, but it's basically, um, think about Lethal Company, mm -hmm. but... It's a silly lethal company where mm -hmm. you are going into horrible haunted places to get content for your YouTube. They describe it as a co-op horror game in which you and your friends go viral or die trying. Uh, they got, like Sage said, over 6 million downloads, uh, releasing it for free yeah. on April Fool's Day. For the first 24 hours, it was free. $7.99 is still a great price a for a game. a great price. Uh, it's a game that looks like it's not going to have a ton to it and then actually does have a really fun gameplay loop. Uh, that's not going to be on this channel today. That's going to be on Anthony and I's channels, uh, both later at, at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Like 6 o'clock. Like 6 o'clock. Yeah. Um, this is the team that made Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. Um, so you know them. So you know them, and you know the silliness that yeah. you're in for. But it is also a genuinely, there are genuinely scary moments in the game. I'm very excited. Um, I can't wait to play it. I'm really looking forward to it. I am bummed that I missed the the free flash sale. Yes. That would have been great, but I'm very happy to pay $7.99 for a cool game. I think that's going to be really, really neat. And I always feel like I miss these, these waves of these games. Me too. Um, we but always miss them. This one feels particularly targeted towards us, though. It does. And so I, the moment I saw it, I was like, yeah. Sage, we've got to play like this game. I was game. bummed I missed Lethal Company. I, I never like got into the wave of it. You know, we missed I still Hell have Divers. friends that are playing it, and they're like, you can come play with us. Uh, but it's it, too late. It's too 
too late. Feels now. too late. It's feels too, too late, late to start. It's over. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go at, yeah. So Skywalker's like, oh, the rigging and the animation style makes sense now. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's 100%. totally accurate. Battle yeah. Simulator. So uh, catch us later for that. If you want to come and watch us co-stream it. Yeah. Uh, and also it's just fun to mention that there are still cool new games. There was another game that I wanted to mention uh, really quick. I know we are, we have so much to talk about yeah. and so little time, but this just fascinated me. Anthony, did you see this, this New York times newspaper? I did. Game? I did. So this is a new game by Molly Industria who has been making, um, socially what they call socially aware games or games for social yeah. good for a very long time. Uh, their biggest one, they kind of came onto the scene with a game called every day, the same dream, which was about mm -hmm. going to work in, in capitalism over and over again. Yeah. Uh, at a time when not a lot of games were talking about that. Mm -hmm. But this one is uh, a game where you are the editor in chief of the New York Times and you have to keep the Times in business while also trying to get people to read actual news and hold on to your ethics. So what I found so interesting is uh, essentially it is a drag and drop and you can play, there's a trailer on there, uh, Alex. There, it is a drag and drop of a cover of the New York Times newspaper, right? And you are seeing stories come up and you are dragging them into different positions on the page, right? Uh, you can also re-edit the headlines to try and distribute the information a little bit differently mm -hmm. to see if it gets you a better approval rating. And the meters on the side are the police, Israel, and the rich. Yep. And you are trying to figure out, and then you can see your readers on the bottom right going up or down, dependent on the news. So right. You're trying to get a lot of readers without pissing off the corporate interests of those three. Uh, it's very interesting. It's a really good commentary on uh, the current state of news media yeah. uh, and the New York Times specifically. I just... <laughs> Molly Industria... Never subtle with their with their commentary. I love I love those three meters on the side that are yep. like so wildly like just there in front of you. Yeah. Um, but this looks really cool, and you can just download it. Yeah, you can have it. It is on uh, itch.io. I will post a link to it actually in our Discord for you right now because uh, I think it's really interesting, and I think it's uh, I think it's gonna be interesting gameplay. Actually, I'm gonna ask Alex too because I'm logged out of Discord. Yeah. Uh, Alex, will you post it for them in the Discord? Thank uh, you. We love you. But while you're there, uh, do check out uh, Molly Industrious' other games. They've made a they've made a lot of really interesting stuff, and yeah. they uh, they release it all uh, they release it all for free, which is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really cool. And also I'm pretty sure they'd be sued by the New York times if they didn't. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's that. Yeah. Right <laughs> now they are protected under fair use and parody, but, um, a game that I want to talk about oh. Sage that's finally happening. I've been waiting on this one for so long. Mm -hmm. Uh, you might remember, uh, Lilith Walther who created the PS one version of bloodborne. Mm -hmm. She has been working on bloodborne cart. A kart racer set <laughs> in the Bloodborne universe. Hell yeah. Now, Bloodborne Kart, unfortunately, uh, was was uh, shut down by Sony's lawyers. What? Uh, yeah. Believe. Sony was like, hey, man, you can't make Bloodborne Kart. You can't. You can't just say that. And it, Lilith was like, I'll release it for free on PlayStation. What do you want? Let's go. Yeah. Uh, and they were like, we want you to not make Bloodborne Kart. We want kart. you to not. Uh, and so These are anything. Yeah. So it's back as Nightmare Cart. Hell yeah. Which uh, Lilith describes as uh, 20 racers, 16 maps, and legally distinct. Woo! It's legally distinct enough, don't you worry, uh, to go and play. It's coming out next month. Uh, it's, it's, oh my God. Elon Musk has ruined every website. Yeah, it's true. Uh, here we go. Here's the video, Alex, on my screen. Um. This is the legally distinct Bloodborne cart. Totally not Bloodborne cart. It's not Bloodborne cart. This is Nightmare cart. Yeah. It's a different game. Those aren't scarves. They're bandages. They're legally distinct. Obviously. Uh, I can't wait for this. I am so excited. There are boss battles in it. It's it's a cart combat game. Hell yeah. So you can also, you know, it, it's got a little bit of that uh, old school road rash and stuff to it. Where I you love can, it. Like, swipe at people yeah. with, your, with your trick weapons. So that's coming out May 31st. May 31st. Very exciting. Uh, Anthony. Sage. We've had so much fun talking about games. Yeah. Are you going to try to end it? Oh, no. I'm going to, I'm gonna, uh, the fun or the show? The, the fun. Oh, I'm going to end the fun. Okay. I've got two back-to-back -back ends of fun. Okay. Okay. First, there are more billionaires than ever before. Hey, congratulations. Congrats to the billionaires, hey, everybody, including. You know what that, you know what that means? Mm -hmm. That means the American dream is real. 
we should all keep trying to be billionaires. We are all just uh, temporarily disgraced billionaires. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, There's yeah. enough out there for all of us. We can all be billionaires. Well, no, it just means that hoarding is worse than ever before when it comes to wealth and should be seen mm. as an ailment, uh, an, an actual Whoops. illness. Uh, bil billionaires now include Taylor Swift, who sure. is officially crossed into the billionaires hey! club. No, no, it's pretty bad. It's actually really bad there. Uh, and here's your reminder that if your fave is a billionaire, your fave is also bad. There are no good billionaires, even Rihanna. Sometimes even actually, especially Rihanna, if yeah. you've heard about the labor have conditions. Have you heard about that Fenty stuff? Yeah, yeah. I have. Yeah. I certainly have heard that uh, the labor conditions were seen to be worse than Shein on uh, Fenty products. Ain't that just the way? Whoops. Ain't that just the way. Uh, uh, that's know. Savage X Fenty. Uh, I don't know necessarily the working conditions for Fenty Beauty, but specifically Savage X Fenty, which is her um, uh, like underwear line, basically. Yeah. It's her lingerie line. Uh, uh, seem to be worse than Shein and Victoria's Secret, which are both notoriously terrible labor conditions. So uh, billionaires now have, uh, they have a combined worth of about 14.2 to trillion dollars which is a two trillion dollar increase in 2023 and it's more than the collected gdp of every country except, except for the, the u.s, US and china. china uh uh oh wait wait let's take that again more than the combined more than the gdp of every country more than the gdp of every country every country except for the u.s and china these these 141 no two two thousand seven hundred eighty one people yeah it's 141 new billionaires yeah. last year these fewer than three thousand people have more money than, than every country every country every country and then I want you to hear the second part oh, of that no. and hear the U S and China and then I but want you to also go wait if the U S has so much money why don't I have health care but you know besides that why do I pay for college but besides that it's so weird. Does this mean, does this mean that capitalism has seized literally all the power? It couldn't be. It couldn't be. It couldn't be that if 3,000 people have more money than every country, mm -hmm. they can't be more, that doesn't, does that make them more powerful than, than every, every country? Government? Yeah. Huh. Yes, it does. Yes, Yes, it does. Huh. And you might be thinking, well, there's always been rich people, but that wealth has increased by 120% in the last decade. The wealth of the hoarding top 1%, that is. Listen, I went to a particularly large high school, but I think mm -hmm. we had about I think we had about 2200 people in my high school. Mhm. Mm yeah. That would be like if one high school's worth of people had essentially all of the money in the world. Hey, neat. One Florida high school's worth of yeah. people. And let's remember like money. Uh-huh like money, like, like matter in the universe, yeah. we're not making more. Nope. There's no more matter in the universe than no. there ever was. Yeah. It just gets reconstituted. What this means is all of that money had to have been taken from somewhere and yes. put into the pockets of these people. That means that money is gone from everyone else. More money for them does mean less money for everyone else. And I do mean literally everyone. Everyone. Everyone has less money because they have so much. You personally have less money because of these people. Like on an individual level, your everyday life is affected by this. It's very cool. It's very cool. It's very, very cool. It's very and cool. And we should do nothing to, to stop it or redistribute power yeah. into the hands of anyone else. I think it's going extremely well. Chase Peterson Withorn, uh, the Forbes wealth editor, said, It's been an amazing year for the world's richest people with more Chase? billionaires. Peterson Withorn. Yeah, that's the most the old wealth, money name on the planet. The wealth editor for Forbes. Hilarious. The wealth editor. Yeah. Oh, Chase Peterson Withorn. Yeah. You have to have two last names to even apply for the job. Chase Peterson Withorn's monocle popped when he heard the news. Yeah. It there has to be multiple libraries at colleges named after your family for you to apply for the job. He the went, wealth editor. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Yeah. I am picturing Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. Yeah. Said a record breaking 14 centibillionaires, 100 billion, uh, have 12 figure fortunes. Uh, Meanwhile, my during, dog has to pee. <laughs> <laughs> even during times of financial uncertainty for many, the super rich continue to thrive. Thriving is such a strange word for thieving. I think they forgot, I think they added an R, and I think that he meant thieving. 
Like that sounds like that's what you meant to say. Thriving was just a, a bit of a misstep there. Uh, Cause I don't think that we could call it that when you are actively negatively torpedoing and setting on fire the entire rest of the population, right? I would think so. Now, while Anthony's gone, so he can't stop me from also giving you more terrible news. Anthony, every time I put it in the spreadsheet, he's like, do we have to? Do we have to? I also want to say thank you to Flatlander for suggesting this horrible story that we hate talking about. We hate the facts, but we appreciate you. Um, I also want to tell you, unfortunately, about J.K. Rowling. Now, I know. Now, I know. Now, I, stay with me for a moment, because don't worry. It's not good news for J.K. Rowling. Uh, J.K. Rowling is challenging Scottish authorities to arrest her for her hate crimes. And I'm being so literal when I say that. I'm being so fucking for real when I say literally she has challenged the Scottish's new, uh, the Scotland's new hate crime. The Scotland? You know the one. Uh, Scotland's new hate crime law and a series of social media posts inviting the police to arrest her if they believe that she has committed an offense. Rolling, did I? No. <laughs> did I miss the JK Rowling? We're just getting started, Anthony. No. Don't worry. We haven't even seen the tweets yet. So uh, Scotland's um, first minister, Hamza Youssef, said that the new law would deal with the rising tide of hatred. The Hate Crime and Public Order Act of 2022 creates a new uh, crime of stirring up hatred relating to age, disability, religion, sexual orientation, transgender identity, or being intersex. Yeah. Specifically. Which then does make it pretty clear that this law does apply to the horrible crimes of J.K. Rowling yes. that are now officially, actually crimes. Yeah, um, and of course, mm -hmm. J.K. Rowling's uh, response to this is, mm -hmm. "Come at me, bro." Now, as a reminder, J.K. Rowling has consistently tried to defend her things by claiming that it is some form of feminism, which is why we call yeah. J.K. Rowling a turf. She, yeah, uh, but. Uh, so interesting that this law does not protect women as uh, a group from hatred. And she's going to fucking hate that. She's going to hate that so much. She's going to be like, but what about the women? But what about the women? I'm just, I've been trying this whole time to protect the women. Mm -hmm. I've been trying this whole time to protect the women. Uh, she is an absolutely hateful, hateful person. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, uh, I'm currently out of the country, but if what I've written here qualifies as an offense under mm -hmm. the terms of the new act, I look forward to being arrested when I return to the birthplace of the Scottish Enlightenment. Uh, hey, fuck you. Hey, fuck you, J.K. Hey, Rowling, on this you. day and every day. Hey, fuck uh, she you. She posted a vile, uh, hateful thread that we won't go through, uh, essentially just making fun of trans women, uh, which, again, in this challenge of it, not only is she like, hi, are you going to arrest me for my past crimes, but let me commit a few yeah. new ones. Literally posting posting pictures of trans women uh, next to pictures of them pre-transition. Yeah. Uh, and and then saying like, horrible, horrible things about them. Yeah, calling them women as like a, a April Fool's joke. It is absolutely disgusting and vile. And she gets more disgusting and vile every day. And may uh, not only the Scottish police uh, come and retrieve her, but also the earth reclaim her to the hell and whence she escaped but from. Here's the, but here's the thing. Talking about this consolidation of power. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do? Do you know what I mean? Like, here's the thing. I hope that they can do a lot. Are they going... Can you mm -hmm. can you do anything more than be a temporary nuisance to a billionaire? That's what we need to that is going to be an answer that we need to know mm -hmm. in the next I mean we should have I wish we knew it 10 15 yeah. 20 years ago, but this is the big answer that is going to the big question that is going to define society yes. over the next 10 20 years. And I'm very curious to see uh and like here's what I'll admit I don't know a ton about Scottish politics, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we obviously are based in the U.S. Uh, but you've been to, you went to Scotland for 10 I did. days. I visited and I stood outside with their communist party and clapped for a while. Yeah, did which that was seem pretty, good? Uh, I mean, the fact that they were allowed to have a communist party was a strong improvement from uh, the American politics system. Sure. So, uh, you know, we don't have, we can't even have a, a communist party. So I'll say it's a start. Uh, but what I don't know is how effective this is going to be. And right. if there are, uh, if if any of you are um, Scottish BBs, either in the chat later on YouTube, I would love to hear your perspective on this about how effective this law can actually be and whether or not like you personally trust the Scottish government to uphold the uh, like hate crime law that they're putting into place. Like how, yeah. how effective you think it actually can and will be. Because in theory, uh, this law is a really wonderful thing. And I hope that more countries can enact uh, and yeah. follow suit in that. It, but it's also about how they uphold it because some yes. of this can be somewhat in like a, 
a gray area in of how general, they enforce it, which sucks. Yeah. In general, uh, a lot of countries in Europe have stronger libel, slander, and mm -hmm. hate speech laws yeah. than we do. But and they work very, very well. They, sure. Uh, but they work, they work much better over there than they do over here. Yeah. Uh, uh, America is so concerned what, with their misunderstanding of what freedom of speech means that they won't enact any of those yeah. things because people would be uh, concerned with their freedom. No, we're only concerned about uh, mm -hmm. the free market and the free market will decide what happens to people, Sage. Oh no, Anthony, we're not, it's 1030. We're not going to go out. You open the can of worms okay, at 1020. Okay, all right. Yeah, <laughs> I've ended it at 1030. Oh no. What do you got? Here's what Last I got. One. Last one. Here's what I got. Uh, Tesla's failing, and it's entirely because of Elon Musk's reputation. Elon Musk's reputation as an idiot is tanking Tesla. Uh, this was an article that was on The Verge, uh, and it is very good. Basically, survey data reported by Reuters found that uh, Tesla's consideration score this is uh, consumer interest in brands and the consumer strength of brands yeah. uh, has gone down precipitously since uh, surprisingly like the beginning of 2022. What happened in the beginning of 2022 what could with that Elon be? Musk in 2022? Basically, uh -huh. uh, before January 2022, if you were to ask people if they trusted and liked the Tesla brand, mm -hmm. over 80% of the American people said yes. Wow. Uh, if you were to ask if people, uh, people, if they were considering a Tesla, over 70% of the American people said, yeah, I'm considering buying a Tesla for my next car. Uh, all these people who can't afford a Tesla yeah. too, you know, it's a hundred, yeah. like, oh yeah, I mean, I'm considering yeah, buying I, a mansion this I year. I do Spider-Man 4, why aren't yeah. they asking me? Right. I'd yeah, do it. I'd do it. Uh, but now, here in the year of our Lord 2024, uh, that trust and like mm -hmm. rating has gone down from over 80% to mm -hmm. under 60%, about 58% of people trust and like the brand. And it should be lower, but that's a strong dip in two years. That's a strong dip. And here's the good, here's the real good dip. Cause the real good dip isn't whether people trust and like the brand it's no. whether they would be seen in the brand, whether they want to uh -huh. be associated with the brand, whether they would buy the car, um, only. 39% of people down from 70 said that they would consider a Tesla. Now, are there other market forces that are contributing to this? Sure. More and more electric cars are on the market. Mm -hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Tesla's no longer have a reputation for actually being a reliable or dependable car. That but also safe to drive. people hate this dude. Yeah. Which is, I am so excited that everybody's coming around to hating this dude. Yeah. It took a little too long, but we're glad that you're here. He literally had to buy buy one of the biggest forms of media and communication yeah. and broadcast how terrible he was on yeah. it. But it worked. But it worked. And we'll take it. We'll take that massive, massive win of self-sabotage. Uh, and that's it. As your reminder, everybody, all billionaires are bad, no exceptions. And that does include Taylor Swift and Rihanna. Uh, Sorry. But also people like Elon Musk, they're all in the same club. I need you to think of them as one lump of people. Yeah. And that those people are no different from each other. Isn't that unfortunate? Womp womp. Womp womp. But that's it, everybody. Uh, do your part. Eat the, eat the rich. Um, thank you so much for joining us for this Wednesday episode. We're very glad that you're here. Thank you again to Hit Point Press for sponsoring today's episode. Once again, uh, if you're watching on YouTube later, you can check the link in the description to check it out on Kickstarter. If you're watching now, you can do exclamation point floral in the live chat if you mm -hmm. want to check out the link to the Kickstarter uh, and you go can and try the Guide to Floral Dragons. Yeah, if you're not watching live, you can try just putting exclamation point floral into whatever you're typing right now yeah. and see what happens. Yeah. Give it a shot. Let us know. Yeah, but That's definitely it. go to the Kickstarter. Yeah, check it out. Let us uh, let them know that we sent you. That helps us. When you click through and you support sponsors, uh, it directly supports our channel and letting people know right. that this is a, a good brand to collaborate that's with. right definitely leave a little <laughs> note if you if you back the kickstarter today that yeah. says that uh you heard about them through pixel circus we love and appreciate you all so much thank you so much for spending your morning with us and thank you to everybody who supported us during the show thank you to everybody who submitted stories for us to talk about it's great we want to talk about things that you want to hear about and that helps us do that uh there are a lot of different ways to support us you can go to patreon.com slash pixel circus if you want a bonus clip from this show every week and a bunch of other lovely content that's you right can join the discord for free yep you can join the discord for free that's free real estate that's where all the cool bb's are hanging out and of course, if you are watching on YouTube or uh, if you're listening mm -hmm. right now on a podcast platform, be sure you're subscribed. Mm -hmm. uh, be sure that you are following. Smash bells and scream into wells, whatever it is that YouTube <laughs> wants you to do currently. Uh, open it up in your Discord and play it on loop. 
That works, apparently. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's it. Hey, Anthony, uh, where can they find you later playing games with me? Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Anthony Carboni, but uh, everywhere else on the internet, I'm at a Carboni. And I'll probably go live a little earlier just to play a little game beforehand. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then at six o'clock, I guess we're going to play some of this uh, this good content game. Yeah. You can find me everywhere on the internet at Not Sage. I will be live at six o'clock Pacific. I stream on my channel Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. And how about Alex? Hello, I'm Alex. Uh, you can find me on the internet on Twitter at Alder underscore Mancy and also um, lots of cool things that I'm working on like Daggerheart and woo, woo. Uh, Confluence. I want to shout out, we're doing the Confluence beta play test soon. So go to bit.ly slash pre-save Confluence to check it out. Woo! woo. Thank you. Uh, I believe Xander just got to the studio. Xander's going to be running our Floral Dragons one shot on Xander, did Friday. Xander, you just get to the studio? <laughs> you wanna, hi, you're welcome to be going to say hi if you'd Xander, like. Xander, come on in here. <laughs> You don't have to. You, you brought something? What? Oh. <gasps> oh, oh, goodness. We got the yeah. physical book. Yeah. Oh, beautiful Look it's how so beautiful, beautiful it is. Uh, you can see Xander running a one shot directly from this book. Uh, we'll be running, playing a lovely time with Floral hey, Dragons on Friday at 6 p.m. A, Pacific on this channel. That was a real appropriate Pop-Tart. <laughs> I'm out of here. Uh, that's it, everybody. Thank you for spending your morning with us. We'll see you on Friday. Bye, BBs. Bye.